Hello, my name is Ben. And my name's Josh. And welcome back to FPL Graduates. And welcome back to another video. We're going to be running through our teams for game week two. We're very much looking forward to it. FPL is in full swing. Let's get straight into Josh's team first. Okay, so game week one got a score of, I think, 77 in total. So it weren't a too bad of a start. Not the best by all means. There were some really, really good scores in game week one. Um, but obviously, that is a good score to build on and try and break down into the top ranks as we go through the game week. So starting off in goal, obviously, I had Onana last week. I'm still a bit like 70-30, I said in our Patreon, between starting Onana and Turner. I'm leaning towards Onana at the moment just because I feel like his floor is a lot higher than Turner's floor. Like if Turner was to concede a goal on Friday night, there will be a lot of upset managers. And I just don't see him making a lot of saves in the game as well. So for me, I think Onana has a good potential of making quite a lot of saves. And then if, you know, by all means, United somehow miraculously keep a clean sheet against Spurs, um, his, you know, ceiling is so, so, so high. Um, so that's the main thing in round Onana. Like I said, it's not locked in just yet, but I think mo most likely that is what I'll be going with at the moment. Mo moving into uh, the defence, Estupan and Gabriel and Colwell. Obviously, we had Gabriel bench last week. From my thoughts, I don't know what Ben thinks, but I think Gabriel should be fine to play this week. Obviously, the timber injury sort of helps Gabriel owners because he's the main sort of replacement for him on that left-hand side. So I'd expect to see Gabriel play on Monday night. Estupanan played really, really well, was really advanced for Brighton uh, and was a really good asset. Wolves away should be interesting. Wolves surprised quite a lot of people on Monday night against United. Let's see if they can do that to Brighton as well. And then Cole Will to finish the defence. Um, starting him ahead of Adoji this week, just because I think Spurs will concede to United. I think the Spurs team sort of plays into United's hands a lot more than than a Wolves team. I think United always have struggled to break down those low blocks. So I think the Spurs game will be a lot more open and free-flowing in that regard. And I think Chelsea as well. Decent clean sheet chances against a West Ham side that I think also a lacking goal threat. If it's not Jared Bowen, I don't see really where the goals are coming from in that team. Moving through to the midfield now, we've got Saka, Martinelli, Eze, Salah on the captaincy and Bruno Fernandes. Um, obviously, the Arsenal double up, both return game week one. A decent fixture, Crystal Palace away. It's not an easy fixture by all means, but I think it'll be good for the attack and returns. Saka was really good game week one. Likewise, Martinelli, I'm quite happy with how they played. Eze, Arsenal at home, really unlucky not to get a return last week. He had like 0.99 expected goal involvements. So I was a bit annoyed about that, but... I think long term, he's going to be one of the better 6.5 million pound midfielders. And I even think a return against Arsenal isn't unlikely in that Crystal Palace team with the way that Arsenal defended, especially against Nottingham Forest in that game. Um, Salah, captaincy, it was always going to happen. We said about it pre-season. I feel like if you've got Salah, you've got to captain him. Bournemouth at home, given the fact as well, I'll talk about a little bit later on with Haaland and City and the way they're lining up. It's, it's just a little bit of a no-brainer for me personally on Salah at home at Anfield. Obviously, he's never scored in game week two, but also he never not scored in game week one and he broke that curse last week. So we shall see how that goes. And then obviously Bruno Fernandes, Tottenham away. I'll be at the game in the Spurs and cheering on Bruno. Should be a good laugh. Um, but yeah, so it should hopefully he can become a lot more fruition in United's attack because against Wolves, obviously he played the ball for Wamba Saka to get the assist to the assist, but other than that, the attack and returns in that United team was looking pretty poor. And then up top, we've got João Pedro, who I was really, really impressed with on his debut for Brighton. Obviously, scored the penalty, missed a really big chance in the fifth minute. But overall, a decent performance from him. And I think he's pretty nailed in that Brighton team from what I saw. And then obviously, Erling Haaland on the vice captaincy. They obviously played the Super Cup last night as of recording this. And I think City in general just lacking a lot of options right now in those attacking areas. And obviously losing the likes of Gundogan, Mares, and then now De Bruyne, Bernardo, Alvarez potentially injured. There's just not a lot of options in that attack. Therefore, a lack of chances being created. Um, so, yeah, I think for me, it's a no-brainer going on Salah, captain. But obviously, if you don't have Salah, Haaland is the obvious captain. Newcastle at home. I think Ben will come to mention that there's been a lot of goals in that fixture um, in the past season. So it should be an interesting game nonetheless. And then on the bench, like I said, Turner, Sheffield United at home, could easily start him, like I said. And then Adoji, who I think is a good option going forward, but I will steer clear just for this fixture because I think United will have a few goals in them this weekend. 
And then Mubama, who, let's face it, probably won't get any minutes. And Kabor, who obviously um, blanks due to Luton Stadium not being ready. What's your thoughts on the lineup, Ben? Do you think I've made the right 50-50 calls for those defenders and keepers? And what's your thoughts on the captaincy? Yeah, so um, I think it's a decent team to go forward into game week two. You can't really complain too much about that. The scoring game week one was decent as well. Um, and it's an interesting point on the Salah captaincy. Yes, I completely agree. If you have him, um, then you should be looking at potentially captaining him. Um, obviously, I didn't go with him from the get-go, um, but I've got sort of a lot of decent players and a lot of decent areas to make up for that. So I'm banking on one of my midfielders to outscore Salah in this game week. Um, obviously, it's a bit of a risk going without Haaland as a captaincy option. I think as a vice captain, it's like, it's almost a case of you don't own him. You have you have 10 players for this week um, and move forward with that and, and hope Salah sort of gets um, the returns that he needs. Yeah, so as we know in the Super Cup, Haaland obviously didn't have loads of touches, but he never does it in games that uh, Man City are playing. So he has minimal touches, but he scores the maximum goals from that. Um, so it is a little bit of a risk not going with the Haaland captaincy, but I don't think it's as big a risk as it would have been in game week one, whereas ownership was much higher than it's going to be this week. OK, so I'm going to talk a bit about my team now. Josh's laptop has died um, so and he doesn't have his charger with him at his house. So I'm going to run through my team, tell you my thoughts, tell you what I'm thinking with this team. So as we go into it. As we can see in goal, we have got Turner from Sheffield United. I've made that decision to go with Turner over Onana. Onana's on my bench. I just think uh, Manchester United conceded 23 shots against Wolves, who were sort of bottom um, in the league in terms of attacking sort of output last season. So I do think Turner is a decent option to go for and potentially better than Onana. Um, I do anticipate United are going to concede against Spurs, who in turn had a lot and a lot of shots in game week one against Brentford. Turner limited and and in fact Nottingham Forest limited Arsenal to under one XG in game week one. So I do think at home to Sheffield United on Friday night, there's potential for Turner to keep that clean sheet. And I think in my opinion, more of a chance than Onana to keep a clean sheet against Spurs. In the defence then, I've kept with Esther Pinyan, who in game week one produced three, four big chances, created, um, got the assist, could have had a Massive haul on another day. So I'm quite happy with keeping him in the team. Gabriel, as Josh alluded to earlier, um, I think he does play. There's been a lot of rumours about what he's doing, where he's going, if he's going to play again for Arsenal. I do think he's going to play on Monday night, though, because of the injury that Josh mentioned with Timber. Um, there's a lot of unknowns with the Arsenal defence, and I think it will be sort of two, three weeks, and, and we can reassess this Gabriel situation. Chilwell, I'm really happy with in my team at the moment. Um, obviously, game week one, again, could have had a much bigger haul um, than than sort of expected. He scored that goal that got disallowed. He got the assist. He looked in really dangerous positions. Don't think he's going to play as high up against West Ham United um, just because that tactic Potch had last week resulted in Cole will go in at left back and Chua more left wing. Um, so I do think he'll revert him back to a traditional fullback, but that doesn't mean he's going to stop attacking in that team. In the midfield, then, we've got Bruno Fernandes, Martinelli, Rashford, Saka and Matoma. So, yes, no Salah in my team. Bruno Fernandes and Rashford, if we'll touch on them. Obviously, Josh alluded that they weren't great going forward, but a team like Tottenham is the perfect team to own Manchester United assets in. They're really good on transition. They're really good on the break and they're really good against the big six. Um, and away from home, I, I think they could get a result. I think it's going to be a higher scoring game regardless. If Rashford can play off the left, then I'd be much more confident in getting returns from him than if he started up top again. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. I do anticipate a return from either one of these Manchester United guys. Obviously, we've got the two Arsenal guys in midfield as well, Martinelli and Saka. Um, I'm happy again to keep them. They both look quite dangerous against Nottingham Forest. Saka obviously got that goal. Martinelli with the assist. I'm going to be keeping an eye on Martinelli's minutes, though. Obviously, he seems to be, well, he seemed to get benched off um, in game week one, anticipate that probably the same will happen in game week two, and it, it might just sort of make maybe lean me towards removing Martinelli for game week three. But that's a decision that I'm happy to wait on. Um, I've got no issues with him at the moment, it's just a case of seeing what the minutes happened in game week two. And then Matoma is uh, the uh, last midfielder in there, really happy with how he performed in game week one. He looks really, really good. A lot of high assist potential rather than uh, scoring goal potential. So I'm happy to keep him in again for this week. And then up top, of course, we've got Erling Haaland, 
and Jal Pedro. Haaland on the captaincy. Um, I mean, the last two games between Newcastle and Manchester City, we saw eight goals in it. So there's going to be goals in this game, hopefully. Um, and Haaland should hopefully get some returns as a result of that. Yes, Kevin De Bruyne is out injured now. It could impact Haaland's output, but in all honesty, I don't think it is going to. When Haaland's been out, uh, when De Bruyne, sorry, has been out, Haaland's returns last season were just as consistent as they were when he was in the team. Um, so I do anticipate Haaland could have a good game. Newcastle, a very high pressing side, and that's the sort of side Haaland likes to play against, is a team that will push up and leave spaces in behind. So I'm hoping he can take advantage of that. Obviously, it's a risk for me going without Salah, but I'm more than happy to captain Haaland this game week regardless. Jack Pedro, Josh alluded to earlier, he looked really good in game week one. And uh, going forwards, 5.5 looks to be really good value, at least for this week and next week. Um, the week after, we may have to change him out based on the fixtures and the form, but more than happy to go with him for now. Then on the bench, we've got Onana. Obviously, I touched uh, upon that earlier. I think I'm going to go Turner, and I'm I'm more the opposite thinking of what Josh is thinking right now in terms of 70-30. I'm 70-30 in favour of going to bench Onana. Um, Henry in uh, the first bench slot on the defence. Um, he looked really good in game week one. Again, played more of a left wing role, a bit like Chilwell did. But against Fulham, I think Brentford are going to revert to a back four. They played about five against Spurs. I think they're going to go back four in game week two. That's just how Brentford have been playing since they've been in the Premier League. They'll play a back five against a high quality opposition and then revert to that back four um, when they're playing sort of a, a team they think that they can have a higher they and think they possess a bit more quality in there. Mubama obviously on the bench as well. He's just a 4.5 forward that I'm happy to keep on the bench for now. And then Bulldog as my third defender. Again, I, I do think Nottingham Forest is going to beat Sheffield United. They, they don't look great. So that's why he's third on the bench. Okay, so that rounds up mine and Josh's game week two teams and uh, what we're going to be doing this week. Both of us are looking to roll the transfer, which is very interesting. Let us know what you're doing in terms of your transfer strategy. Are you looking to transfer in anyone this week? Who are you benching for that? Uh, let us know in the comments. And uh, yeah, as usual, please remember to like, comment and subscribe to the FPL Graduates YouTube channel. I've been Ben. Josh was there earlier and we'll see you guys later. Have a good game week, everyone.